Hi everybody, meteorologist Joe Chaffee here on this Friday, end of the week, and uh, we've uh, got a springtime pattern that's pretty much developed across the United States as we uh, take a look at what we're seeing with the uh, upper air initially. Uh, we've got this flow that comes across the northern tier, so we're kind of on the edge of some colder air and warmer air thanks to this ridge building in the west. I'm sorry, in the east, and we have, you know, these weather systems that just continue to move along coming in out of the Pacific. This one in particular that is now moving out of northeastern New Mexico and into Oklahoma is going to be the catalyst for some severe weather today. And as we uh, go forward in this, um, what happens is that ridge in the east gets in there and then in response to the pattern that's going on to the northeast with specifically we have this uh, building little blocking high, not that it lasts very long, uh, up uh, just east of Greenland, and we've got this upper low that's sitting out in the ocean. So what that's going to do is even though the upper flow is not exactly uh, something that favors it, uh, colder air, it, it does at the bottom part of the atmosphere support a, a high that winds up building up uh, to the north. And that surface high is going to be right here. And I'll show you on the surface map in, the minute, in a minute. But that's going to allow some cold, air, some cold marine air to drain down. I have the hour drawn a little too far south. But it's going to drain marine air down uh, into uh, the northeast and maybe down into uh, New Jersey, Maryland, and Delaware, probably as far south as that gets. And then you've got, you know, these other weather systems you know, that all are moving along in the Pacific flow coming across the United States. Uh, this one here, this lead one. Uh, is going to actually there's two little pieces of this that that system uh, in the southwest that, that comes out uh, into the plains weakens and kind of splits so you got this first one uh, a weak piece that comes out and then another piece behind it and still yet another one that uh, comes into the west as we uh, move into next week this is again very very typical for this time of year and when we look at the GFS model uh, it does afford the opportunities for rain here in the eastern states as all these weather systems just continue to move right along. And by the way, as each one of these moves across the south, it's going to uh, open up the doors for uh, severe weather. So the absence of any kind of polar flow would keep temperatures at least near or probably slightly above average through uh, the period uh, throughout the eastern states. Now, as we go toward the end of the period, there is some sign on the GFS anyway. There is blocking that develops. Uh, now, whether that lasts or not remains to be seen. Blocking is a, is a signature of the spring. Uh, you see a lot of it uh, in the springtime as the overall jet stream pattern begins to transition over from winter uh, to eventually a summer pattern and the whole jet winds up retreating northward. But you've got this very, you know, toward the end of the period, if it's real, uh, you know, you've got this deep upper low in the east. You've got this blocking. Uh, that develops up uh, over Greenland and you know some semblance of colder air that comes in but now remember we're into April 9th here so colder air has to be put in quotes uh, also um, in the uh, if, the, if this were to play out uh, with that kind of cold air aloft it probably would mean a um, severe weather event at some point uh, into the eastern states if you want to really sort of speculate uh, in the long range but that's like in the long long range and we know how that loves to change. So I'll uh, show you how this all plays out at the surface. We're also getting to the time of year where, you know, major storms are going to be few and far between, or at least more so, even though every once in a while the model wants to go hog wild with some sort of big gale center like it does here uh, in, uh, in, in, in the end of the two-week period. Again, who knows how real that is. It actually has a couple of them, uh, one that swings over to the Great Lakes. So let's back this up and we'll start again. So here we have uh, today's system uh, in the southwest and it's going to produce probably some severe thunderstorms uh, late this afternoon and this evening uh, from Missouri on down into East Texas you can see it there uh, we have a warm front that's moving through uh, our neck of the woods here in the northeast and that front is just going to kind of settle there to our north and then start sinking southward during the day on Saturday and that's why the warm-up uh, that we get such as it is will only be for the one day. Uh, the hot wind from a hostile wind direction is a bit problematic. Then on Saturday, the emphasis of thunderstorms shifts into Mississippi, Alabama, um, 
into Kentucky and Tennessee, although I'm thinking that the severe weather outbreak that might occur here will be of a lesser extent than what we'll see today. That front backs down. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Even though the upper air suggests you know, a warm look, the bottom part of the atmosphere does not. You've got this hide that builds down uh, into east, southeastern Canada, and that creates a marine flow here. So Sunday is not going to be the nicest of days with an onshore flow and temperatures probably in the 40s. Now, it does want to back that up as a warm front on Monday with some more rain or showers. Now, the question then is whether that front gets through here because this time of year, uh, cold fronts and backdoor cold fronts that want to come back up as warm fronts don't have uh, a lot of success because of the 40 degree ocean. Meanwhile, out in the west, uh, you can see there's a, another weather system for late in the weekend, early next week that comes into the northwest and translates over uh, into the Rockies with maybe some much needed rain and some snow as well. Here comes another low uh, that develops in northeastern Texas, probably be a severe weather outbreak with that. Uh, looks like uh, the model wants to do something here for the middle of next, uh, next week uh, for eastern Texas and then on up uh, in, into the southern states for Thursday and Friday. And then that, that low winds up moving north, eastward, and then eastward as it translates over to the coast. Now, this is, again, uh, one of the things you see this time of year with lows that go by to the south is the establishment of, you know, that northeast, that very chilly marine flow that sets up. At least it affords opportunities for rain and continues to um, help alleviate the uh, drought that uh, has covered a lot of this area. The heavy snows this winter are, and the snow melt will really go a long way to raising water levels. Here's yet another system for uh, now we're into Saturday, April 1st. Uh, that comes down if this is, again, if, assuming that the model is, is correct in this idea, uh, with another low that develops down in New Mexico with some snows into Colorado and some colder air out in the western states. And again, that one moves along and the model does uh, crazy things with that. So now we're getting into the squirrely part of the long range in terms of um, the what uh, the pattern may or may not be. I want to look at the European model really quick. And, you know, the European kind of does the same idea. There really isn't too much difference in the models uh, going forward. Uh, when we uh, look at this, here's for the weekend, of course, and then uh, you've got low pressure that moves up uh, for Monday and again for Tuesday and a bit of a break with a dry high building in and then another low uh, to the East Coast for the end of next week and then still another one that's getting ready to shoot out, although it's not quite like what the GFS has. Um, this shoots it out even further to the west uh, because of a ridge that builds up in the eastern states. And when we look at the upper air pattern of the European, it's kind of a little bit different than the GFS. Not over, we'll, we'll, we'll do a comparison here. So um, let me just go back. We'll start with we'll start with day five. You know, and we'll see how, how it changes. So here's the Europeans view, and here's the GFS. Well, I have to switch to the old one. It's not out far enough yet. So here's the GFS's view, and here's the Europeans view. So the European has probably what looks like more definable features here. Maybe they're a little bit stronger than the GFS, although the same idea continues uh, with that stream flow from the Pacific and that northern jet. Here's that low that's out at 50 and 50. Uh, with just a little bit of blocking. The problem is with this, with this is that it's it's only there for a very short period of time. And then you see how quickly the upper low pulls out. Um, and the ridge starts to pop up again here uh, in the eastern part of the United States. So, you know, it, 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 I'm not a big fan. You know, as far as springtime weather is concerned, it's a, it, it, when I say I'm not a fan of, of springtime weather, it's not that I don't like it nice and I don't like, uh, you know, to enjoy myself when the weather is good. The problem with the springtime, especially in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic states, is that uh, it's a very, very difficult time to forecast because of these backdoor fronts uh, that you wind up with those fronts sitting, you know, right on top of you. And if they're in the middle of your forecast area, you've got a problem uh, because you've got to figure out uh, all the details in terms of the temperatures. And that is so prob that is just so difficult. I could be sitting in one area in a span of 50 miles and go from a temperature of 40 to 70. And, you know, if I'm off by one zip code, I got a problem. So here's our surface map uh, with regards to the very short range. And 
tomorrow the front is literally right on top of New York City at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So areas to the north are going to have a northeast wind. Areas to the south of that will have a west wind. So that's liable to cause, you know, this, this temperature forecast nightmare. When we look at the two meter temperatures, you can see where the 40s are and you can see where the 70s are. You're in northern New Jersey and in Connecticut, you're in the 40s. In Long Island, you're in the 50s. If you're in central and south Jersey, you're in the upper 60s and low 70s. And there's that back door sinking southward as we move through Saturday night with temperatures dropping into the 40s uh, all the way down uh, into northern Delaware. And then the question for Sunday is whether that front comes back up as a warm front, and it doesn't. So this entire area is just going to be chilly with temperatures all day long running uh, just in the low 40s, even upper 30s. Look across Connecticut, the Hudson Valley, temperatures not out of the 30s on Sunday on the GFS model, if you want to believe it. That might be a little bit low, but um, you know what? Not impossible with that cold high to the north. And then on Monday, it comes tries to come back up as a warm front. And you can see by Monday afternoon, we've got the 50s and 60s poking at their heads up into New York City. And that's in response to the low that's going by to the west. My forecast headache, folks, not yours. Um, you uh, have a great Friday and a great weekend. We'll keep you up to date over the weekend with some uh, with more weather videos. Latest posts on meteorologistjoechoffee.com. Angry Ben has New York City covered on nycweathernow.com. And, of course, you can download my app and subscribe to my forecast, which are just 99 cents uh, a month for New York City, Long Island, New Jersey, Hudson Valley, Eastern Pennsylvania, and Connecticut. Can never forget Connecticut. All right? All right, everybody, have a great weekend.